again, and good morning, everyone. 11 minutes before 7, and we're looking live at Havana, Cuba, where this morning the U.S. flag will be raised for the first time in more than a half a century. The U.S. and Cuba severed diplomatic ties in 1961, but the American embassy is reopening today after formal ties were reestablished on July 20th. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau. Kyle is off this morning. We're starting our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. New for you this morning, the Minnesota State Patrol is investigating a motorcycle crash early this morning in Clay County, just east of Moorhead. Troopers say a driver ran off County Road 336 around 2.30 a.m. into the median and fell off the motorcycle. The rider's injuries are not considered life-threatening. Millions of families are sending their kids off to college in just a few weeks and all across the country. There are concerns about campus safety, everything from sexual assault to intoxicated students walking home. NDSU leaders are taking action to prevent crime in the dark, which campus police say is a whole different story. They took a walk with student leaders to point out overgrown bushes and dark parking lots, certain problems that can be fixed to help keep students safer and make the job easier for police. Now, if your son or daughter is heading off to college where they'll be out on their own a lot of times, make sure they know who to contact and the safe places on campus. Coming up on 651, time for weather and traffic on the ones and uh, important day to talk about the seriousness of how hot it's going to get today. It is serious. It can also be fun until somebody passes out. So, yes, uh, take it easy as we approach the mid-90s today with the air temperature. Heat index will be close to 100 by into the evening. 8 o'clock, you know, sunset about 8.30 to 8.40. 88 degrees, so it's just going to be a real scorcher sitting on the deck here this evening. And then during the overnight, pretty quiet, but we'll start 75 to 80. And then... With that kind of a st head start on the temperature, we'll be near 100 air temperature into the 100s for the actual heat index. So it's going to be hot and muggy, and that'll <laughs> cook some thunderstorms moving through southeastern North Dakota starting late afternoon, early evening. Some of these storms obviously could be very strong with all of the heat energy we have here. So. Just plan for that. This morning, not a cloud in the sky, except a fair amount of uh, haze on the horizon. And uh, again, uh, no clouds, no precipitation, no uh, raindrops coming down anywhere. South, southeast winds three to seven miles an hour. Grand Forks, East Grand Forks, and uh, sitting with, well, they had some fog reported there, but uh, don't see, that's out at the airport. Uh, not so much in town, 63 there. We do have haze visible from our sky cam and 69 right now in Fargo-Moorhead. Let's get a traffic update. Here's Al Ahmed. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, southbound, or northbound, rather, on uh, South University Drive, and I'm working through this construction zone here. Uh, crews are out here working this morning, and I'm trying to see exactly what they're doing. They, have a, they put down the asphalt. It looks like they might have picked up or are in the process of picking up at least some of the cones that are out here. But in any event, there's still plenty of road work going on out here. You need to be uh, extra careful as you're driving through this, as I am trying to do. That's right. That's exactly what they're doing. They're picking up some of the cones. So it looks like we might have four lanes of traffic out here once again. Hooray. I hope that's the case. Uh, Interstate 94 traffic definitely brisk this morning, particularly westbound. In fact, it's actually heavy out there. I saw a North Dakota Highway Patrol officer had a... Uh, car pulled over on eastbound I-94 just on the west side of the 45th Street overpass. Make sure you give him some extra room uh, to do what he needs to do as well. Again, out here on uh, South University Drive, it looks like things are definitely improving. We'll keep you posted on developments out here. Drive carefully today. Al Ahmed Valley Today Traffic. It's now seven minutes before seven. Police in western North Dakota think there might be a busy bank robber on the loose. They believe a man who hit the BNC National Bank in Stanley, North Dakota in the morning might be the same guy who held up Dakota Bank in Minot 50 miles away in the afternoon. The man is about six feet tall. No one was hurt in either case and no word on if a weapon was used. It's Friday. Time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Danielle Lawson is wanted for a probation violation on preventing arrest and contributing to a deprivation of a minor charge. Call police if you have any information on Lawson. A Texas company has applied to build a new oil refinery in North Dakota. 
Quantum Energy and native son of Houston, is looking at building near Berthold and has applied for an air quality construction permit for a 40,000 barrel a day facility. The request comes on the heels of the new Dakota Prairie Refinery in Dickinson, which was the first refinery to be built in the U.S. in decades. Another security scare in the Twin Cities this week sent the bomb squad to the Minneapolis airport. Officials there confirmed preliminary tests on an unattended bag spotted at the Terminal 1 baggage claim yesterday showed the presence of explosives. The Bloomington bomb squad removed it and later determined the package was not dangerous. A security scare at the University of Minnesota on Sunday and Monday shut down a section of campus for about 24 hours. A concerned WeFest camper is worried about a new system for camping at the event next year. Trisha Eilertson, Eilertson says she saw online that campers must arrive together to camp together. She says in past years, campers would come and save spots for others in their group. She's been camping at WeFest for 18 years with friends who come from all across Minnesota, and she thinks the change will make WeFest a different experience. WeFest officials tell us the policy is not new, and if you plan to camp together, you should arrive together. They do plan on enforcing the rule next year. A Minnesota legislative group abruptly stopped working yesterday when they say it became clear it was no closer to an agreement with the governor on a special session to help Mille Lacs Lake resort owners. The panel co-chair says Governor Mark Dayton and his commissioners failed to provide a specific plan for assisting businesses hurt by the lake's declining walleye population and that a fix will have to wait until the 2016 regular session. The governor wants zero interest loans, property tax breaks, and expanded tourism promotion for the area. He says he's disappointed about delays for help for that area. UND's student body president has found many students support the idea of putting the name North Dakota back on the list of potential UND nicknames. Of the more than 3,200 respondents, about 2,200 voted yes, 796 voted no, and 239 weren't sure. UND President Robert Kelly says he will consider putting North Dakota back on the list of finalists. The finalist list so far includes the Fighting Hawks, Nodax, North Stars, Rough Riders, and Sundogs. Take a step back in time with the whole family this weekend at Bonanzaville. The Valley Today's Macy Anger joins us this morning with more on what's new at Pioneer Days this weekend. Good morning, Macy. Yeah, Lisa, after a long morning, we decided to kick back in the saloon. Here joining me is Missy, the event coordinator. Can you explain a little bit about what's going to be going on here this weekend? Yes, we have a beer garden that will be happening in this wonderful saloon this weekend. It's going to be nice and hot, so you can cool off with a beverage. And what can people get here that's new? Um, well, the beer... The beer garden itself is, is a new feature um, this year, and we actually just reopened this building on the 4th of July. We had a lot of volunteers that um, played a key role in us being able to do that. Um, the volunteers from Page, North Dakota, thank you for volunteering your time. Um, thank you to Tech to America's Roofing for donating the roof, and also thank you to Tom and Carol Kenville for volunteering your time and, and just making this place so wonderful again. Can you just briefly tell some details about this weekend if people want to come out? Absolutely. The beer garden will run um, all day both days. So we open at 10 o'clock on Saturday and we run until 5. And on Sunday uh, we are open from noon to 5. And it's not just a beer garden out here. There will be a ton of events for the whole family. Can you just briefly just a couple of those that people can look forward to if they want to come out here? Absolutely. If you have been watching previously, we have shown um, quite a few demonstrations. Um, you know, we will have face painting, henna tattoos, there will be train rides, horse-drawn wagon rides. There's just so much. We really invite everybody to come out and experience the pioneer life. We've had a really fun morning this morning, Lisa, and I think I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> I know. I've brought my girls to Pioneer Days into Bonanzaville. It's really super fun for the whole family, so hopefully people take advantage. And, uh, hey, perfect timing, hot weather to open up a beer garden at Bonanzaville as well. Macy Anger reporting live. Thank you, Macy. A lot of people in the Valley know what it's like to try to beat the high heat. But how about this? A snowball fight in the middle of summer. A chief lifeguard at a swimming pool in a Czech Republic town collected shavings from the grooming machine at the local ice rink and then took them to the pool where the kids turned them into an August snowball fight. Temperatures in the Czech Republic have hit record highs. 
passing 100 degrees on some days, and that would be fun. A snowball fight. It, the snow wouldn't last long today, though. Oh, afraid not, or tomorrow either. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. A new survey found the average person spends about $1,100 a year on this. The answer is takeout food. That makes sense. I probably spend more than that, sadly. Two or three times a week, it adds up. It adds up. <laughs> it does. You'll want to get something cold, drive through and get a, you know, icy or a... Iced coffee. Iced coffee. Yeah, to start Ice. the day. Let's uh, like that. check our weather forecast out, which starts under a clear sky, but uh, what we're not showing you is haze. Lots of it, a warm and muggy start under a mostly sunny sky. Midday, near 90 at noon, Woo. and 94 this afternoon with a very high heat index. The sky is clear, that's right, not a cloud there, and we're just shy of 70. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Remember, we'll have more local news and weather and traffic for you right here in just 25 minutes and throughout the day. Check our news headlines at valleynewslive.com.